There are at least four characteristics of sociological thinking. We have spoken about three of them. So we started in the live lecture by talking about seeing the general in the particular. Seeing the world sociologically includes realizing how the general categories we fit into shape our experiences. And this could be along the lines of age, generation, race, gender, class, and so on. So seeing the general in the particular is really about connecting behaviors to larger socially significant groupings that society has constructed. Second, in the live lecture, we talked about seeing society in our everyday lives. And this is basically the concept of the sociological imagination, which Mills defined in 1959 as the ability to see the relationship between individual experiences and the larger society. And key to Mills' assertion is that Society shapes individuals and individuals shape society. We might think about, for example, wearing masks and how our perception of masks and our likelihood of wearing masks, particularly early on in the pandemic, is shaped by our upbringing, our socialization, the part of the world that we're in. So for example, when you were a kid, did you see people wearing masks? Is it common for your friends and neighbors to wear masks when they're sick? What kinds of meanings did you attach to masks before COVID and what kinds of meanings do you attach to masks now? These are all ways that our surroundings have affected our behavior. And at the same time, we as individuals end up reproducing or recreating society. Because what is society? Society, from some perspectives, is just the actions of many, many, many people reproducing these institutions, reproducing this culture every day. And so our behavior, when we choose to wear a mask or not, literally will impact the people around us. Our decision to self-isolate can really have an immediate and direct impact on the overall well-being of our communities and countries. And this is more obvious now than usual, but this is very much an ongoing process all the time. After the live lecture, we talked about seeing the strange in the familiar with the Nasarima reading. So this is about looking at the social interactions around you with fresh eyes, as if you've never seen them before. Looking at social norms and rules that are taken for granted and seeing how and why they are put together. In this mini lecture, we are going to talk about the fourth characteristic of sociological thinking, seeing through marginality and crisis. Seeing sociologically is to understand where you are situated in relation to the people around you. This comes hand in hand with recognizing that many individuals experience life differently than you do due to the characteristics that may place them closer or further from the margins of society. These can include, but are not limited to, sexual orientation, race and ethnicity, gender and sex, socioeconomic status, and so on. Throughout this course, we will analyze each of these factors in more detail in the context of COVID-19 and how they affect individual and population health outcomes and life experiences and opportunities. Sociologists talk about living on the edge, the routine experience of being an outsider or being a marginalized person. And though this comes with much hardship and systemic oppression, it can also provide access to different insights and perspectives. The materialist and standpoint perspectives that some sociology is built upon find that your daily life activities actually shape what and how you can know. So for example, if you are uh, the CEO of a business or a minimum wage worker at a business, you would probably have different insights about that business just based on your different life experiences and access to ways of seeing. Insights from the margins can be particularly useful for understanding how a system or society is put together and how it's working for different groups. In addition to marginality, seeing through crisis is a fundamental approach to sociology. Periods of rapid social change or crisis can help make the sociological perspective most visible. So the founders of sociology, particularly in the 1800s, were often responding to the industrial revolution and urbanization and massive changes that were taking place at the time in Western Europe. This gave them insights into how society functioned, what made it tick, and how these processes were affecting inequality and social connection. This global pandemic also presents an opportunity to see through this rapid change how society was put together and how we would like it to be put together for the future. And the crises we face also help us connect local contexts to national and international contexts, taking a global perspective, which we'll discuss in a moment. 
In relation to COVID, sociology helps us understand that while the we're all in this together mentality is prevalent and critical, that there are some populations that by nature are more vulnerable. For example, the elderly, individuals who experience incarceration, individuals with substance use disorder for whom social distancing ha can have fatal implications, and individuals who are immunocompromised. Through a sociological perspective, we are able to identify and analyze how factors such as race and socioeconomic status put individuals and populations at significantly higher risk of contracting the disease and experiencing the associated negative health and social outcomes. Now let's consider sociological thinking in global perspective. Just as sociologists situate the individual in the historical and cultural context of a given society, the same can be done on a global scale. The global perspective is the study of the larger world and our society's place in it. Being aware of our own position in the world helps us understand our own life experiences. Five factors can help us situate ourselves using the global sociological perspective. Where we live shapes the lives we lead. Societies throughout the world are increasingly interconnected. What happens in the rest of the world affects life in Canada or wherever we are. Many social problems that we face in Canada are far more serious elsewhere and thinking globally helps us learn more about ourselves. Each of these factors can be implemented to help us situate our own experiences of COVID-19 in the broader global context. Thinking about our location in the world, we might ask, how has your government's response to COVID-19 shaped the population's experience of the pandemic? How has it shaped your experience of the pandemic? Given that societies around the world are increasingly interconnected, how has COVID-19 changed how connected you feel to the world around you? You might be spending more time on social media, but less time actually traveling and connecting with other people. We also know that what happens globally affects life in Canada or whatever country you're taking this course in. This is a time of monumental and critical social change. How has that impacted your experience of the virus? How has the virus impacted your experience of other events like the global movement to end systemic racism? We know that many problems that we face in Canada are experienced in a more serious way on other places around the world. How has the pandemic affected another part of the world differently? If you are in another part of the world, how has your experience differed to other countries? For this last point, please take some time to reflect on how taking a global perspective has changed your understanding and experience of COVID-19 so far. What do you hope this course will help you develop further?